This video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, makers of the Flash XL gaming chair, which I am currently sitting in right now. A good chair, just like a good mattress or a good pair of shoes, are one of the ways to help you stay more comfortable in life, and the Flash XL is one of the few chairs that's large enough to support my gigantic ogre body. It's got a frame large enough to support my frame, along with some nice supportive back and neck pillows, and the fact that you can lower the armrests means it's very easy to stash underneath your desk or work table. It also contains a mechanism to allow it to go forward and back, just like a car seat so if you need a bit of extra leaning room or if you want that extra firm support, it's not at all difficult to adjust. So go ahead and have a look. Use my affiliate link in the description and use coupon code KODAK to save a now 30% off your entire order. Guys, I had to fight pretty hard to get that discount, so please appreciate that. So that is a look at the gaming chairs made by Ewan Racing. I know it certainly helped my quality of life, and if you think it'll help you out too, then feel free to use my coupon to get them at a pretty good discount. That's Ewan Racing, and now on with the show. Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and today we are taking a look at uh, opening up a draft booster box of Flesh and Blood Monarch. You guys might remember this set as one that I previewed a card for roughly a month ago. It is, um, it's the Slobberknocker Simulator from New Zealand. It is, um, this is the uh, draft box for the set. It came out on the 7th, but I was only just now able to get my hands on a box of it. And this is what is called a draft booster box, where the idea is you could run a drafting pod of eight players out of one box by just giving each one three packs out of the box. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the concept of draft, a draft game is where you take a booster pack, like everybody, you have like a table of eight players who each get three booster packs. What they do is they open a booster pack, pick one card from inside that booster pack that isn't the, the pack's token and then pass it to the person next to them who then does the same going around the table until the pack is empty then you open the next one and pass it the opposite direction etc and then you build a deck out of the cards you got from those packs so um it's it's a popular method to play a game inexpensively it allows certain cards to shine um it is a very popular format it is a common format used in like pre-release events so players get a limited selection of cards, but they also get to, you know, play with that limited selection. Um, it's, a very, it's a very popular form of play. Um, I'm opening this box, even though I know a lot of people like to sit on the Flesh and Blood boxes because of the chance of the Fabled Rares in there. And I know a bunch of people were upset that I wasn't terribly excited that I pulled Eye of Ophidia when I pulled it. I, I'll try to be excited if I get the Fabled Rare in this set, guys, okay? Um, another interesting thing that they've put out is the Blitz deck, and of course I got myself the Prism Blitz deck, the, uh, the Herald of Tenacity was a card from Prism's deck. Um, this is different from the intro decks in that they are much slimmer decks, they are draft size decks, only 40 cards, but they do have some interesting changes to them. One of them is that they actually contain a copy of a character specialization card. I don't know if it's unique to these decks, um, or if, uh, if you can get the specialization cards in the packs, I imagine we'll have a pretty good opportunity to find out. But, um, the fact that they've made the specialization cards a bit easier to get is certainly an improvement. I remember in Arcane Rising, one of the comments I made was it took an entire booster box to get one character specialization. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty fun one. A lot of heralds in here that all three of the different uh, heralds of tenacity are in this deck so there's a lot of a lot of interesting stuff in this deck so the theme of this set is talent so you can notice how the the box is divided down the middle between light side and dark side so the idea is that there are light and shadow talent so the idea is we're getting like the brute and the illusionist and stuff characters from like different parts of the world so the way you'd have like a, a brute in the land of darkness might be a bit different from how you'd have a brute in the wildlands. And the idea is that you have uh, each character has one of two specializations, one of two talents, either the light talent or the dark talent. The light talent involves adding cards to the player's soul, which they can then use for various effects. And the dark talent involves um, accumulating what is called a blood toll. But by doing so, you essentially gain a second hand of exiled cards that you can play around with so it's it's an interesting set the idea is that they're they're sort of like multi-class characters but at the same time they are kind of they, they are trickier to use like i did an example in the box in, in the in the card reveal where i showed how the regular brute gets a bonus whereas a shadow brute staves off a penalty by doing basically the same thing so 
let's take a look inside here. Let's let's open this box up and see what the contents are. I still don't think they do box toppers. Um, I don't know if they did box toppers. Oh, I think they did do box toppers in Crucible of War, but Crucible of War, since it supported eight different classes, was considered to be a um, a constructed only set where the the you're not supposed to like bust open a box and. Uh, play a draft uh, a round of draft with it it's only 10 cards per pack it was a special set so in monarch we get nope no box topper but they do have them in the box divvied up by light and dark does that go down the whole box no nah, not quite it does on the top though so the fact that it was able to do that on the top is pretty stylish so how many different packs do we have it looks like we only have the two the light and the dark so i'll shuffle these around a bit so we actually get a bit of a a pleasant surprise depending on our contents here. All right, here we go. I've got them set up so that we can have them alternating right, left, right, left when I mess around with them. So this is gonna be our first one. I'm gonna to try to make this one my archival pack, so I'm gonna open it carefully. This is gonna be my darkness pack. EN, I can see that there, so they print in multiple languages. I know it says age 16 plus on the wrapper, but I imagine that's because of, you know, how, how New Zealand and, and Australian law about that kind of content is usually curated. Ooh, very, opens nice and smoothly. I know a lot of people comment about, uh, a lot of other folks who do these sorts of unboxings comment about the ease of opening, but yeah, there's no tearing on that. That was nice and smooth. So we have Shane, or is it pronounced Shane or is it supposed to be pronounced Chain? Because I, I know it's like supposed to be a pun in that he creates soul shackle tokens. So we got Young Chain, what did we get on the back? Oh, look at that. Very first pack contains our full hero, our Shadow Rune Blade. We already had a Rune Blade in the uh, in the uh, the other set, the Arcane Rising set, who is from the same place as Chain, I believe, but he did not have the shadow ability as well. So this is, so the Rune Blade looks, looks kind of, looks kind of like a bit of a lost cause in the original set. I guess this guy's like a really a lost cause because of his, uh, shadow chain ability but hey that's a good start we got our uh, our t for token card is uh, our character right away and we have rifted torment so this is shadow rune blade speaking of the devil um you may play rifted torment from your banished zone if you do deal one arcane damage to the target hero blood depth at the be uh, at the beginning of your end phase if rifted torment is in your banished zone lose one so the idea of the of the uh, the shadow cards is that you can play these cards from your banished zone but they deal damage to you the more of them you stockpile so you better pick carefully which ones you want to go with graveling growl we have shadow brute so this is this is a uh, a brute play graveling growl only if a card with six or more uh damage has been put into your banished zone this turn the six damage is the theme of the brute and you have the blood debt which is the theme of shadow so that's how you get that mixed together Piercing Shadow Vice. I've been getting a lot of shadow cards. I wonder, do, 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 are there like guaranteed light and shadow cards in the box depending on the pack? I guess we'll find out pretty quick. Um, Piercing Shadow Vice. Herald of Tenacity. Hey, hey, look at that. It's it's the one I looked at uh, the other day. Um, I looked at this card. I, I was thinking about how like some of the like the blue or yellow ones are viable because you can only block it with one card and most cards, their default defense value is three. So if that one damage gets through, they either have to spend equipment to um, stop it or they have to, uh, or they or you get to, to stack it on there with a nice high cost card. Express Lightning, not just Lightning, but Express Lightning. So this is Light Warrior. So this is a, a warrior action, but also um, a light action. As an additional cost to play Express Lightning, you may charge your hero's soul put a card from your hand face up under your hero card. So that this one allows you to uh, charge a card for free. It's only three damage, but for a yellow, that's not too bad since it also allows you to charge. A lot of cards go off of charge. Wartoon Herald. So this is a light illusionist. If Wartoon Herald hits, put it into your hero's soul. So it has only the soul effect. So power seven, it's more powerful than, um, than Herald of Tenacity of the same level. It's also cheaper. Um, it does not have the effect to uh, to prevent an opponent from blocking damage. I don't know. Can you do, like, defense additions against Dominate? That's an interesting question. Pound for pound. So we have a nice generic one. If you have less health than opposing hero, it gains Dominate. Okay, so this is another one. The hero can't defend pound for pound with one uh, more than one card from their hand. Um, Eclipse Existence. So this is a shadow one. Whenever an attack you control hits a light hero this turn, you may banish a card from their soul. If they do, they lose one health. Hmm. Is this a, uh, 
If you have more health than an opposing light here, you may banish an action card from your graveyard. Hmm, this is this seems like a really strong card. Um, although this is like a this seems like a sideboard card. You cannot guarantee in constructed play that your opponent is gonna be a light hero. So this is a card definitely for a side. Spew Shadow, Shadow Action. Choose an attack action with zero in your banish zone. You may play it this turn. Um, okay. Minnowism. The next attack you uh, action card with three or less base damage you play this turn gets plus two, so that one combos with Express Lightning. Belittle. Why are we getting so many cards about being small? As an additional cost to play Belittle, you may reveal an attack action card with three or less base damage from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a card named Minnowism. <laughs> okay. And reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck go again. So I guess the theme is the cards are inexpensive and combo into each other. Uh, Mark of the Beast. Ah. Well, look at that. If Mark of the Beast we put into your graveyard from anywhere, instead banish it. Ah, so it's uh, it has it's, uh, high power for its ability. Ah, this is a this is a mythical. Is that is that what it's called? Mythical rare or mystic rare? Or what is it called? I'm not entirely sure, but uh, got a nice card there, Mark of the Beast for the Shadow Brute, who should come up as we go along. Ether Iron Weave, destroy Ether Iron Weave, gain two. Action, activate this ability only if you have played an attack action card and a non-attack action card this turn. Go again. Not bad, it's a turn extender. Prismatic Shield, create a Spectral Shield token. Um, the uh, deck comes with the red version of this card, which creates three, so that's not too bad. Um, it's an instant, so it does not count against your action for the turn. That's another rare. And Vexing Malice. Oh, we got three rares in this pack. Not bad. So because we got... One in our foil slot, we got three rares in this pack. Very, very, very nice. Vexing Malice, deal two da arcane damage to target hero. Okay. Up next, let's do a light pack. Let's see if we get a light character in our light pack. That will certainly be oh, interesting to find out. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to get an archival one. Oh, well. Hatchet of Body. Warrior weapon, two-handed. Once per turn action attack, and our back is... Ah, Bolton. So, Bolton is our light warrior card. Now, warriors have an interesting combo in that they are uh, they are able to do multiple hits, and they have uh, a way of getting around opponent's armors. So, Bolton, if you've charged this turn, attacks to control of plus one while defended by an attack action card. So, that's very much the, the theme going on here. This is the young version of the character. The adult version of the character is the same, but with 40 health instead of four. I think there are some characters that have started to put out some characters that actually have different health scores. We'll see if we get any of those. But um, yeah, you can see the theme of charging there. So the uh, the cards that allow him to uh, charge. So Rift Bind, you may play Rift Bind from your Banished Zone. Blood Debt, it's the it's the same for uh, for the, the shadow actions we saw before. Graveling Ground, we saw. Rifted Torment, we saw Cross the Line. As an additional cost to play Cross the Line, you may charge your hero's soul. Now that involves taking a card from your hand and putting it underneath your character. So again, that's a card that is no longer paying costs or being used to attack or defend with. Um, it does give the advantage of activating the charge abilities for characters like Bolton. Um, it's also blue, so three damage for blue is not bad. Herald of Rebirth, so this is another one in the, the Herald lineup, similar to the Herald of Tenacity. Um, it's a bit stronger than the Herald of Tenacity and allows you to put a card from, with Phantasm from your graveyard on top of your deck. Um, this is a... Uh, it has to hit, but that's a useful ability um, for, like, if you want to put a blue card on top of your deck so that you can use it to pay the costs guaranteed next turn. That's not bad for setup. You can, of course, also pick the Phantasm that you like. It's a, a pretty good card. Phantasm's a problem, but it, there's uh, a number of cards... I saw them in the deck. We'll probably see them here. That helps nullify that disadvantage. Herald of Ravages. Here's another one. This one does damage and does an additional damage um, if it hits. Surging Militia has plus one damage for each non-equipment card defending it. So this is another... It's a generic action, but it feels like a warrior action. Um, Rising Solar Tide. Light action. This actually came in the Prism deck. Uh, if it hits, put it into your hero's soul. It does not count as charge. But it still adds to the soul, which is nice. Uh, Blinding Beam, another light instant. It costs one less to play if it targets a shadow card. This is another card that goes in the side. Target attacking or defending attack action gets minus three damage. So it's an instant, which means it doesn't count as a defend card. So you could use this against cards with Dominate. Yinti Yanti. When, while Yinti Yanti is attacking and you control an aura, it has plus one damage. 
while Yinti Yanti is defending, and you control an aura, it has plus one defense. I assume the uh, I assume the the lower the lower pitch versions of this card have more defenses, but it becomes a oh uh, well, yeah, that doesn't really do much at all, honestly. Um, belittle, we already saw this. Arcanic Crackle, deal one arcane damage to target uh, hero. So this is a Rune Blade action. Cool. Um, oh, this is our this is our foil card. For the box, get a bit of that effect on the lightning. It's kind of nice. Not quite as much as Zap, but, you know, it's 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 not necessarily easy to get a good foiling effect on here. Deal one arcane damage to target hero. It's another blue. Ether Iron Weave. We already saw this one. Seek Horizon. Okay, here's our first rare. As an additional cost to play Seek Horizon, you may play a card from your hand on top of your deck. If you do uh, put a card uh, from your hand on top of your deck, if you do Seek Horizon, gains go again. Um, red for attack four. Hmm. I'm, I'm wondering how you can use this card. And Parable of Humility. So this is an aura. An attack action cards controlled by an opposing hero have minus one damage while attacking and defending. Um, it's an aura, which means it's a permanent card. It goes into play. However, it has the ability Spectra, meaning an opponent can attack it. They can attack, uh, just throw an attack action at it. It doesn't look, it can be defended. It just becomes destroyed if it becomes the target of an attack. Um, it ends the combat chain if it gets destroyed, so I don't know if that means you can't, like, uh, activate abilities that work with Go Again. I'd have to double-check that ruling there. All right, onwards and upwards. Dark Pack. Ah, we got a Spectral Shield token. So these are what Prism creates with her ability. If your hero would be dealt damage, instead destroy Spectral Shield and prevent one damage that source would deal. Is this automatic or is this optional? That's the big question is do I have to let my spectral shields bite it or can I try to save my shields and take the damage directly? That's the question I have. And the back of our token is Hatchet of Mind. We already saw this one. And for our pack, we got Bounding, Demo uh, Bounding Demigon. So this is a Shadow Rune Blade. If you have played a non-attack action card this turn, you may play Bounding Demigon from your Banished Zone. So it's another one that does that. Boneyard Marauder. So this is our Shadow Brute. As an additional cost to play Boneyard Marauder, banish three random cards from your graveyard. Um, but it does uh, at the beginning of your end phase. If So this can either set up a secondary hand, but in the case of the Brute, I don't know if the Brute can actually do that. Rift Bind. You may play Rift Bind from your banished zone. That's another one that's like this. Bolt of Courage. Light Warrior. As an additional cost to play Bolt of Courage, you may charge a hero's soul. Oh, it says may. So you can play it so you can charge or not charge. If you've charged this turn, Bolt of Courage gets if this card hits, draw a card. Um, that's pretty expensive for a, a red. Herald of Protection, this is another one. It creates a Spectral Shield token. It's like all the other ones that get, get added to the soul. Take Flight. As an additional cost to play Take Flight, you may charge your hero's soul. If you've charged this turn, Take Flight gains go again. So this is a better one, honestly. Void Wraith. You may play Void Wraith from your Banished Zone, another one. Um, Minnowism. That's that again. Zealous Belting. If there is a card in your pitch zone with attack greater than Zealous Belting's base attack, Zealous Belting has go again. So this is one that uh, it seems like it would go well in a Brute deck when you're drafting. Not sure about Constructed, though. Um, Brandish. If Brandish hits your next weapon attack this turn, gets plus one. Go again. All right, so that is, uh, that's a good one for like Ninja. You can see they have the Ninja character on there. Adrenaline Rush. When you play Adrenaline Rush, if you have less health than opposing hero, it gains plus three damage. Not bad for a comeback card, um, since it's a generic one that boosts it up to seven, which is pretty nice. Arcanic Crackle. I got it again. <laughs> Ironhide Helm. When you defend with Ironhide Helm, you may pay star. If you do, it gains plus two defense and destroy it when the combat chain closes. So it's a bit better than the, than the Iron Rot. Soul Harvest. Shadow Action Attack. Ah, Legendary Leviah Specialization. You may only have one Soul Harvest in your deck and only if your hero is Leviah. Okay. Um, it's a generic rare, though. So we got some... So it looks like the specializations have been lowered to rare from their previous slot. As an additional cost to play Soul Harvest, banish six cards from your graveyard. It gains plus one for each card with Blood Debt banished this way. If Soul Harvest hits a hero, banish all cards from their soul and they lose health equal to the number of cards banished this way. So even, even though... Even against... Even if it's not used as... Uh, against the shadow card this still seems like a strong ability because as long as you banish a card with a power of six or more then it staves off the blood toll for a turn so it's a it's this is a this is very much a finisher card because of how much extra damage it can do um and herald of triumph 
Attack action cards have plus one damage while defending Herald of Triumph. If Herald of Triumph hits, put it into your hero's soul. So it's another one in the in the Herald category. So, uh, oh, attack action cards have plus one damage when defending Herald of Triumph. Oh, hmm. I wonder what the benefit of that is. Oh, minus one attack. Okay, so this is a, uh, a card designed to break through brutes. Nice, So because it, re it reduces all their damage down to five. All right, next one. So yeah, you, you got a good look at Levia there. She's the shadow brute. Oh, I keep forgetting to, to do my archival one for the light. Galaxy Black. Once per turn, pay one to attack. If you have played a card from your banished zone this turn, Galaxy Black gets plus two damage. Okay, so it's very, very, uh, very low damage. Um, it does not have go again, so it's definitely one that's meant to be a finisher. And on the back, we have Chain again. All right. Oh, hang on. I should uh, put Soul Harvest down here because that's a, that's a signature attack. All right. Deadwood Rumbler. Play a card, discard a, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more is discarded this way, banish a card from a graveyard. So that works. Arcanic Crackle. Hungering Slaughter Beast. Whew. That's definitely a brute action. As an additional cost to play Hungering Slaughter Beast, banish three random cards from your graveyard. I haven't seen any, like, generic cards yet. Herald of Tenacity. There he is. Express Lightning. There it is. Spears of Surreality. So this is what the Illusionist bar, uh, barrier looks like with that sort of like purple and blue crystal look to it. Phantasm and go again. Um, it's only cost one for four damage. It's pretty, pretty basic. Uh, but for go again, that's not bad. Seek Enlightenment. The next action you play this card has plus two damage. And if this hits, put it into your hero's soul. Go again. Warmongers Recital. The next attack action that you play this turn gains plus two damage. And if this hits, put it on the bottom of your deck. Adrenaline Rush again. Spew Shadow. Is this our, our foil? Nope. Uh, choose an attack action. It's a shadow action. Okay. You may play it this turn. If it attacks light here, it gains plus two. Memorial Ground. So this is a, a generic instant. Put target attack action cost with cost two or less from your graveyard on top of your deck. Rise Above. Ooh. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it from here, but the hollow foiling effect on this card is great. It's also a rare, so we're getting three rares in this pack. You may put a card from your hand on top of your deck rather than pay Rise Above attack cost. Ooh, that's not bad. Um, Ironhide Gauntlet. That's the same as before. Endless Maw. As an additional cost to play Endless Maw, banish three random cards from your graveyard. If a card with six or more damage was banished this way, it deals another three damage. So that's eight. That's not bad at all. And Herald of Triumph. All right, on to another dark. I'm hoping we can get some more, some more character tokens in here. That'd be nice. Let's see. Although I have noticed there has been a pretty big focus on Blitz over Constructed. Ah, Iris of Reality. It is Prism's weapon, and what it does is it gives all of your Illusionist Auras weapons with the ability to attack. Uh, it costs three to attack with them, but they do have go again. And on the back we get Prism Hero Young. Hmm, I thought they were deliberately avoiding doing this, trying to have like the weapon and the character on the same token so that they're always on different tokens. All right, Seeds of Agony. That's another uh, another... Brute zone smash with big tree. Ah, finally a generic brute action. Sure, they're strong, but they're I've seen rocks more intelligent. <laughs> so it's a nice generic action for some good damage above six, which is nice. It's seven, so it breaks through the uh, breaks through the the herald of victory. Bounding demogon. We already have that. Courageous steel hand. If you've charged this turn, target attack. It's plus two. So this is a warrior. This is an attack reaction. So it's an addition. Herald of rebirth. Cross the line. Overload, dominate. If overload hits, it gains go again, although it only does one damage. <laughs> Easy to defend against. Illuminate, if illuminate hits, put it in your hero's soul. So that's another light action. Memorial ground, put target attack action with cost zero from your graveyard on top of your deck. Blood tribute, opt three, then banish the top card of your deck. On to the next pack. Another light pack. Blasphemit, the Soul Harvester, Shadow Token, Demon Ally. Okay, so this is one created by, uh, this must be one created by a uh, card effect. And on the back we have Urser, the Soul Reaper. So we have a double-sided uh, token card. Look at that. So once per turn, act, once per turn action, zero attack while Urser is attacking here with one or more cards in their soul. This The attack has go again. 
allies can be attacked and can't be defended with shield. So these are uh, tokens that are summoned by card effects. You'd think they would alternate those. Smash with big tree. Piercing shadow vice. You may play it from your zone. Dread screamer. As an additional cost to play, Dread Screamer, banish three random cards from your graveyard. Enigma Chimera. Two Enigma Chimeras. They're technically uh, red and yellow pitch. Express Lightning. Lunar Tide Plunderer. Eclipse Existence. Lunar Tide Plunderer. I didn't miss that. I missed that one. They kind of look the same. If Lunar Tide Plunderer hits, a hero banish it and up to one card from their soul. Okay. Eclipse Existence, whenever an attack you control hits a light hero this turn. Oh, so they have, oh, this is, these are shadow cards. Okay. You may banish a card from their soul. If you do, they lose one. Impenetrable Belief. If three or more cards have been put into an opposing hero's banished zone this turn, Impenetrable Belief gains plus two damage while defending. So that's another another side card. Warmonger's Recital. Stony Wootenhog. Wootenhog. If Stony Wootenhog is defended by less than two non-equipment cards, it has plus one damage. Take Flight, Foil, Ironhide Legs, that's our equipment, Unhallowed Rites, that's that again, and Glisten, distribute up to three plus one counters among any number of weapons you control. Oh, look at that. At the beginning of your end phase, remove all plus one counters from weapons you control. Okay. Legend Story, on to the next one. Spectral Shield. And on the back, we have Soul Shackle. Oh, okay. So we have the light and the dark. That one works a bit better. Um, we have Rifle Torment, Hungering Slaughter Beast, Rift Bind. We play Rift Bind for your banished zone. Herald of Ravages, Cross the Line, Spears of Surreality, Seek Enlightenment, Belittle, Zealous Belting, Ghostly Visit. We play Ghostly Visit from your banished zone. Does a little bit of damage. Blinding Beam costs one less to play if it targets a shadow card again. Doomsday! Look at that. Legendary Leviathan Specialization. Oh, this is a legendary rare. Okay. Nice. Um, you may only have one Doomsday in your deck, and only if your hero is Leviathan. I hope I get Leviathan's card. I mean, I, I can't imagine why I wouldn't get Leviathan's card in there. Oh, but this one has a, a bit of cold foiling effect on there, if you can see that. It's not like a total card there. Play Doomsday only if there are six or more cards with Blood Debt in your banished zone. Create a Blasphemet the Soul Harvester token. So, I see. It, it's a zero cost blue topper. Um, you have to have six more cards with Blood Debt. But hey, once per turn he can attack for six. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's nice. Um, and because that's my foil card, it means I'm getting two more rares in this pack. Time Skippers. Action three. Destroy Time Skippers. Gain two action points. Ah, okay, so that means you can attack multiple times even if you don't have uh, go again. Writhing Beast Hulk. As an additional cost to pay Writhing Beast Hulk, banish three random cards from your graveyard. If a card with six or more is banished away, it gains Dominate. Okay. And Soul Shield. Put Soul Shield into your hero's soul when the combat chain closes. And it's a defense reaction. Cool. Um, on to Light, so I need to open this one carefully so I have my, my archive. There we go. Nice and easy. Like it ought to be. You know, I don't know if how many games do that these days, but it used to be if you save the packs, you could, uh, the pack labels, you could send them in and get like some bonus stuff. Galaxy Black and Chain. Have Boneyard Marauder, Seeds of Agony, Driveling Ground, Engulfing Light. Uh, you may charge a card. If you charge a card, if it hits, put it in your hero's soul. So this thing can get double your money. Herald of Tenacity, Take Flight, Minnowism, Surging Militia, Void Wraith, Ghostly Visit, Illuminate, Hungering Slaughter Beast Foil, Hooves of the Shadow Beast. Whenever a card with six or more is put into your banished zone, you may destroy Hooves of the Shadow Beast. If you do, gain one action point. Basically gives you the ability to go again. Not bad. Howl from Beyond. Um, if you play Howl from Beyond from your Banished Zone, the next attack action you play this turn gets plus one and go again. It's a blood toll, but uh, not bad. Seek Horizon. All right, on to another dark. What magic awaits us this time? Ravenous Meat Axe. This is a new one. So this is a, this is a Brute. Once per turn, you may pay two to attack for power of three. 
If uh, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more is discarded this way, Ravenous Meat Axe gains plus two. And on our back, we have Leviah. Oh, we have Young Leviah. So she looks like a like an ordinary person undergoing some kind of possession ritual. Um, so yeah, so a card with six or more has been put into your banished zone this turn. Cards you own lose blood debt during the end phase. So she can stave off the blood uh, the blood uh, the blood uh, debt damage. Arcane Crackle, Deadwood Rambler, Rip Through Reality. Uh, you may play it from your Banished Zone. If you have dealt Arcane Damage to an opposing hero this turn, it gains go again. Uh, very, very much a Rune Blade thing to do. Express Lightning, War Tune Herald, Bolt of Courage, Frontline Scout. You may look at Defending Hero's Hand. Uh, that's a good card. If Frontline Scout is played from Arsenal, it gains go again. That's that's a very good card. Yinti Yanti, Rising Solar Tide, Void Wraith. Seek Enlightenment, Invigorating Light. Ooh, this is another one that's very, very, very pretty in foil. I hope I can do it justice by, by rotating it around here. When you play Invigorating Light, if there are no cards in your hero's soul, put it into your hero's soul when the combat chain closes. Ooh, not bad. Uh, it's another rare, so we're getting three rares in this pack. Ironhide Gauntlet, Writhing Beast Hulk, and Tear Limb from Limb. Draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more is discarded this way, the next brute action gets plus X, where X is its base damage. Oh, nice. That's good. So you can turn that into a 14 damage card with that. Nice. And this is this is a blue. Wow. Wow, that's good. Oh, that's that's an M. Look at that. That's a, myth, a mystic rare. All right, we have, uh, oh, we have Iris of Reality and on the back, Prism. Unworldly Bellow, uh, banish three random cards from your graveyard. Piercing Shadow Vice, Deadwood Rumbler, Take Flight, Enigma Chimera, Engulfing Light, Blood Tribute, Yinti Yanti, Memorial Ground, Pound for Pound, Zealous Belting, Blinding Beam. Cost one less to play if it targets a shadow card. So the foil, again, really nice. Halo of Illumination, Writhing Beast Halt, and Phantasmify. The next attack action you play this turn is Illusionist in addition to its other classes. It gains plus three damage in Phantasm. So this is the blue version. The red version increases this damage by even more. Uh, it increases it by five, I believe. On to the next dark one. I'm happy getting these Brute cards. I play Brute. So it's nice seeing, the, nice seeing some of these cards. A lot of setup. A lot of payoff. Bounding Demigon. Oh, I need to do the, the token first. Soul Shackle and uh, Ravenous Meat Claw. Meat Axe. Demigon, Arcane Crackle. Da -da 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 -da. I think we're running out of uh, out of commons to look at. Overload. Uh, yeah, there's a stronger one. Two damage. Frontline Scout. Rally the Rear Guard. Once per turn, instant. Discard a card. Rally the Rear Guard. Gains plus three defense. Activate this ability only while Rally the Rear Guard is defending. Uh, illuminate. Enigma Chimera Foil. Ironhide Legs, Valiant Thrust. If, Valiant, if you charge this turn, Valiant Thrust gains plus three, which for blue, five damage ain't too bad. And Shadow of Blasphemet, Blood Debt. Uh, discard a card, if a card was six or more. So I guess I guess uh, the, the theme is our, our Shadow Brute has made a bargain with some kind of thing called Blasphemet, which I guess is Baphomet combined with Blasphemer. Ap apropos. Maybe that's why this game is 16 plus, because it has all that in it. Okay, we have Leviah on the front. Do we have the full Leviah? Oh, we do! Leviah, Shadowborn, Abomination. If a card with six or more damage has been put into your banished zone this turn, cards you own lose blood debt until the end phase. So we have our Shadow Brute, and I've been getting a lot of cards for her, a lot of legendary cards, so I only need one copy of them. Hungering Slaughter Beast, da 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 I think, I think I've gone through all of the... Uh, all of the comments. Did I get two... Oh, there it goes. Uh, Stony Watten Hawk. Illuminate. Seeds of Agony is our foil, so uh, basic. Stubby Hammerers. Discard Stubby Hammerers. Attack action cards with three or less base power gain. Plus one. So this is another one for the small. Convulsions from the Bellows of Heck. As an addition to uh, additional cost to play Convulsions from the Bellows of Heck, banish three random cards from your graveyard. So this is another Shadow Brute. And Consuming Aftermath. As an additional cost to play Consuming Aftermath, you may banish a card from your hand. If Shadow card is banished this way, Consuming Aftermath gains Dominate. Cool. And that allows you to banish a, a six for Livia's ability. 
All right, we have Spectral Shield and, yep, Hatchet of Body again. Dread Screamer. Is this a new one? As an additional cost to play Dread Screamer, disc oh yeah, we have seen this one. Piercing Shadow Vice, Smash of Big Tree, Bolt of Courage, Enigma Chimera, Second Swing, Seek Enlightenment, Overload, Ghostly Visit, Adrenaline Rush, Belittle, Spew Shadow. Oh, we've already seen this one. Halo of Illumination. Out Muscle. When Out Muscle isn't defended by a card with equal or greater strength, it has go again. This one definitely makes sense in a Brute deck. That's pretty nice. Um, Rouse the Ancients. As an additional cost to pay, Rouse the Ancients. You may reveal any number of attack action cards from your hand with 13 or more total attack. If you do, Raz the Ancients gets plus 7 and go again. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, it's one you have to play right away. You clearly need to use something. You may reveal any number of cards with attack of 13 or more. Um, this is another one you can do with Brute, although it doesn't have a base damage of 6. So that's, that's uh, one that you might want to play with caution. Next pack. Oh, this one must have a Cracked Bauble on it, because normally there's a token. Or is the token on the top? No, the token's on the bottom. So this is Cracked Bauble. So there we go. Rift Bind, Groveling Ghoul. Realm, Ghostly Visit. Oh, we have a Foil Ghostly Visit. Hmm. Not quite what I was hoping for. Not bad, though. Um, then we have Ebon Fold. So we got a Rare Equipment. Instant, Destroy Ebon Fold. Banish a card from your hand. If it's a shadow card, draw a card. Ooh, nice. Um, so that's a, that's a nice rare piece of equipment there. Why don't I put Cracked Bobble there? Tremor of of Yarathel. If a card has been put into your Banished Zone this turn, Tremor of Yarathel gains plus two. Um, for a red, maybe not as great. Out Muscle, again. The red one's probably best for Brute. Do-do-do-do-do-do. All right, Spectral Shield and probably... Uh, oh, nope, Hatchet of Mind. I've gotten a few of those. Oh, Hatchet of Mind. Oh, that's a different one. Oh, no, that is the same one. And Unworldly Bellow, Rip Through Reality. Da -da 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 Lunar Tide Plunderer, Brandish. Name Illuminate. Herald of Tenacity Foil. Hey, look at that. Nah. It's our guy again. Time Skippers. Unhallowed Rites and Shadow Puppetry. Unhallowed Rites. Uh, if you haven't played a non-attack action, I think we've seen this one. The next attack action you play this turn gains plus one damage. Go again, and if this attack hits, look at the top card of your deck. You may banish it. Go again. Not bad. Not bad. It's red. Uh, it's only defense two, but hey, that's not bad. Um, let's see. Starting to run out of packs here. Well, a lot of it is because we've run out of uh, we run out of cards to talk about. Hatchet of Body and Bolton. We haven't gotten Bolton's regular hero card yet, have we? Plunder, Memorial Ground, Unworldly Bellow, Foil, Gallantry Gold. Action, one, destroy Gallantry Gold. Your weapon attack is plus one damage this turn. Go again. Ooh, nice. That's definitely one for the... for the, uh... for the Light Warrior for Bolton. Ballroom Blitz, and Plow Through. Your next weapon attack this turn gets plus three, and if... It's a warrior action. If this weapon is defended by an attack action card, it gets plus one damage until the end of turn. Go again. That's a war, very much warrior card. So all of them have their different ways of getting around defense, whether it's just by attacking multiple times or through intimidate or anything like that. Do, 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 do. Soul Harvest. Did I get two copies of Soul Harvest? Wow, okay. Uh, I got a foil soul harvest now. <laughs> it's a shame it's a legendary specialization. It would be neat if I could include both of these in there, but I pulled soul harvest twice. And it's the foil, so we're still getting a regular uh, a regular card in here. So we've got Endless Maw and Howl from Beyond. I believe we've seen both of those. Galaxy Black to Soul Shackle. Two copies of Soul Harvest. Wow. Um... Although we're still missing some hero cards and the fabled, so still oh, plenty of potential. Um, although it's pretty clear I'm making a Levia deck now. Spectral Shield and Iris of Reality. Talisman of Dowsing. This is a new one. A generic action item. Go again. Spell Void 1. If your hero will be dealt arcane damage, you can have a uh, damage prevent one arcane damage that source would deal. That's if you destroy it. 
Yinti Yanti, Void Wraith, Unworldly Bellow, Dreamweavers. What's with all these music? We have Ballroom Blitz, now we have Dreamweavers. Um, destroy Dreamweavers, the next illusionist attack action you play this turn. Gains, uh, loses and cannot gain Phantasm. Go again. Nice. Um, Dusk Path Pilgrimage, your weapon attack this turn gains plus one and blah 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 blah. You may attack an additional time with this weapon this turn. And Glisten. <clears throat> so two... I already saw those. Spectral Shield and Soul Shackle. Nice little token combo there. Do 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 do. Surging Militia. Herald of Judgment. Whoa! Okay. So I got the Prism Specialization Herald of Judgment card. This one also came in the starter deck. I got this one in foil now, though, so not bad, not bad, not bad. Another copy of Ebon Fold, Seeping Shadows, and Valiant Thrust. I believe we've gotten, I believe we've seen both of these. So I've gotten some nice cards. I've gotten some interesting cards. I've gotten a lot of rare foils. I've gotten, I think, more rare foils than, than somebody is normally entitled to. We'll see if I get the rare foil. Uh, Ravenous Meat Axe and Leviah, regular Leviah. Arcane Crackle, da 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 Second Swing, yep. You've attacked with a weapon this turn, your next attack gains plus two. da 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 Ghostly Visit, Surging Militia, Rising Slaughter Tide, Hungering Slaughter Beast, Foil, Ironhide Plate, Captain's Call, and Rise Above. These are new. Choose one. The next attack action card with one or... It costs one or less you play this turn, gets plus two. Um, or go again. Oh, that's not... That's pretty good. Um, you pull, put a card from your hand on top of your deck. Oh, Rise Above. Yeah, we've seen Rise Above. All right. We are down to our final four packs, ladies and gentlemen. We've gotten some interesting cards. That is for darn certain. Oh, we see Prism, and that means the other side is... Yep, Full Power Prism. So I got that one, too. Nice. Got a lot of good Prism cards, a lot of good... Uh, I got mostly good Leviah cards. do 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 Blood Tribute, Endless Maw for our foil, Ironhide Helm, Howl from Beyond. You may play it from your uh, from your zone. The next attack action you play this turn gets plus two. So this is more for the for the Rune Blade. And Out Muscle four. So I've gotten each version of Out Muscle. Alright, so three more cards. I mean, it's been a pretty good box with all the Leviah cards I've been getting, but will we get it? Will we get the uh, oh this is Crack Bobble. But will we get it? Will we get the foil card? The the, the, the fabled Dreadwood. Da, 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 bo, 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 bo. Ground and Boneyard Marauder. Okay. For our foil. Blood Drop Brocade. Instant. Destroy Blood Drop Brocade. Gain one. Activate this ability only if you have dealt or been dealt damage this turn. Not bad. Seeping Shadows and Demenex Exhale Crossroads. How the heck are you supposed to pronounce that? Dimensional Crossroads. <laughs> they printed this purely for to, to mess with announcers, didn't they? <laughs> All right, two more. One light, one dark. Heaven or heck, fight. We'll start with heaven. Bolton, which means, of course, the back is full power Bolton. Sir Bolton, Breaker of Dawn. Da, 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 da. Herald of Protection, Engulfing Light, da, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Minoism, Zealous Belting, Overload, Memorial Ground Foil, Gallantry Gold, Valiant Thrust, and Trimmer of Yarathal. We already saw those. And our final pack. Probably not going to get it in this box, folks, but like I said, I got I got a bunch of good Leviah cards. I got them in foil. I got some foil specializations. I can't really complain too much. Spectral Shield and Hatchet of Mind. I got a lot of Hatchets of Mind. Um, rip through reality. Deadwood Rumbler, da 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 da, Spears of Surreality, blah 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 Geez, Ellis Belting, and our final foil card for the box is Plow Through. It's a rare at least. Um, Ironhide Helm, Soul Reaping, and Seeping Shadows. Legendary Chain Specialization, alright. So I got some good cards in there. Alright. Neat. So that is our box. Let me see, did I pull all the M's out of there? Okay, so on further investigation, I have confirmed that what I do have here is in fact about as solid a box as you can get that doesn't contain a fabled rare. I mean, I got 
a legendary rare, which I thought was one per box. Turns out it's one in four boxes. It's the next rarity down from Fabled. We got a bonus majestic rare in the form of a foil Mark of the Beast. And like I had stated before, we got um, basically a Levia Shadowborn Abomination like starter kit here. We got her legendary specialization. We got a foil version of her specialization. A solid uh, one third of the bonus foils I got were all Shadow Brute cards. That's eight out of the 24 foils, which included the Mark of the Beast, and the Soul Harvest cards. I also got Herald of Judgment in foil, which is another character-specific card. I remember talking about these cards in um, a bit earlier, in the, in the previous, the, the Arcane Rising, about how it was really hard to get the specialization cards. Um, these seem to be easier. They're regular rares, although it's just as likely that they have simply introduced more specialization cards for each character as... We got Soul Harvest, which is a specialization for Levia, and also Doomsday, which is a Soul Harvest for Levia. And uh, you guys know I'm already a big fan of playing as a uh, brute, I mean, as getting brute. So getting all these uh, Shadow Brute cards for me is a mwah, little little chef's kiss there. Um, although I might as well take the opportunity to show off the difference between a regular card and a Shadow card. So here is a brute regular card. You can see it's like look like spiked mauls along the side here. The Shadow Brute cards have those spiked mauls, but they're all, like, purple and infected looking with, like, these little eyeballs coming out. That's the style of, uh, of all of these types of cards is, uh, they have, like, a regular version of the card and then, like, like a glowy, a glowy version of the card, like a darker version of the card. It's the same with, uh, with the Illusionist, like, the Light Illusionist is, like, you know, gold and silver, whereas the regular Illusionist is, all like, blue and purple. You saw that, so that's how you can tell the, uh, the special talent cards from each other. So yeah, um, I might try to see how well, how good of a Leviah deck I can build out of all of this, uh, out of all this content here. And, uh, as I predicted, I did get tokens for every character. I got the same full complement of tokens, which included the, uh, the ally token. So allies are apparently a newer thing. What happens is they come into play and they can be the targets of attacks. So I can essentially have this guy ready to perform an attack for free. He's essentially a weapon that does six damage and costs nothing, and an opponent has to dedicate six damage in one turn to this character to get rid of my otherwise free attack. I mean, I wouldn't have go again, but there are um, abilities that allow me to give allies go again, or give myself go again, or give myself additional action points, so he doesn't necessarily take away from my uh, ability to act on a turn. So this guy is is nice and dangerous, although it takes the it takes the uh, the uh, the doomsday card in order to do that. But yeah, yeah, this is fun. Um, I might have some more on the way. I don't know if I'll open up another one. Like I said, this is a pretty solid box. The Kodak on camera box luck lives another day. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna work on that deck. So until next time, next box opening, next uh, chapter. This is Kodak signing off.